Did you know that 92% of people who set New Year's goals don't achieve them? What? To me, that's crazy. 92%. If this is you, I get it, but today's your day because I'm going to give you a five-step NFA goal achievement formula. If this is your first time here, welcome. I'm Dr. Amanda Barrientes, the founder of NFA Coaching and the host of the Max Potential Habits podcast. This is your place to come every week for tips, tools, and inspirational interviews to help you optimize your habits so you can thrive and lead a kick-ass life and business. Let's get to it. Goals. I love this topic so much because I've always been a person who loves to write goals. <laughs> Even when I was a kid, I had a journal, I wrote down all my goals, I usually accomplished them. Sometimes I'd write pretty lofty goals and I'd get most of the way there, but it's something that has been a strength for me in my life and I've watched a lot of people set goals that they have a hard time accomplishing. And as I work with people in business coaching, obviously goals is a really important topic. And right now, most of us are starting to look at 2020 and go, okay, what do I wanna accomplish in the next year? And many people don't know where to start or they start way too big, they don't know how to break it down, or they might follow the SMART system, or there's all kinds of systems that you could follow, but something that people forget to consider is the energy dynamics around goal setting. Why are you setting a goal? Who do you need to become to set the goal? What's the purpose of a goal? What do you really want to create? And those are the things that I'm going to bring to the table for you today, because there's tons of research out there. Go look up SMART goals, follow that method if you want. I think it's really important to get grounded in this more holistic approach of goal setting where you're considering a big, broad vision of what you want to create in your life and business and you're stepping into a new identity of yourself, who you get to become to achieve those goals. Uh, James Clear in Atomic Habits talks about the importance of identity formation in accomplishing your goals and in changing your habits, which is what it takes to accomplish goals. Read that book if you haven't. It's awesome. Check it out. So let's start with number one, desire. The origin of all creation starts with desire. You desiring something. It means that you have an idea of something that you want that you don't yet have. In many ways, this is you feeling a sense of unfulfillment, a sense of lack, and or a goal vision-based focus toward a new direction that you want to go. And in this, that first step is having the desire that's fulfilled by your teleological drives. So if you're thinking about teleology, it has to do with purpose. So you're coming from an inspired place of desire, not a deontological drive, which is actually injected values of other people. It's duty-based. So if you're creating a deontological goal, it's you're fearing other people's uh perception of you not being successful. It could be that you're setting a goal for your partner or your kids or society at large because you think you need to be something and it's driving you because of that fear of losing uh, losing the success, losing the people liking you, all of those things. If you're creating a goal from that place, the desire is going to be blocked. You are not going to be as motivated you're not going to be intrinsically inspired. Instead, you're going to be motivated from the outside, which is much harder to achieve your goals. So you want to be teleologically driven through your desires. So sit down and write out a list. I actually have an Excel spreadsheet with desires and I, I transferred it to Trello lately. So try out Excel, try out Trello, whatever works for you. You do it in your journal and start writing a desire list. What do you really desire to have in your life? So this is a have moment where you're going like, I want to have all these things. We're going to talk about being later, but have, I want the new house. I want the new car. I want all these things. What is it that you desire? Is it that you desire to be living in a healthy body where you work out five days a week? Is it that you desire a connected, deep, fulfilling, meaningful relationship? Is it that you desire to be out of debt and building your wealth toward the multi-million dollar mark? I don't know what it is for you. Could be a whole bunch of different things. But get clear on what your desires are and your desires, not someone else's, no one else's injected desires, yours. Start a desire list and watch how fun it is to start checking off the boxes as you create and fulfill those desires. Number two, 
Belief. So last podcast episode or last episode, I believe I talked, I think it was last one. I'm not sure, but look up competing commitments. So belief system is really important for you to be congruent in your conscious and unconscious beliefs. If those aren't matched, you're going to have a hard time getting there. So let's say you believe that you want to become this amazing multimillionaire, awesome person, but in your underlying story, you have a a competing committed belief from your unconscious that says that you're not not capable, you're not competent, you're not smart enough, you don't deserve it, you're going to have competing commitments holding you back. And because 95% of us, of us, the way that we operate is unconscious and 5% is conscious, when you have that competing belief, it's really hard to break through to the next level and achieve your goals. So you've got to start to learn about what those unconscious beliefs are. And doing that, start journaling, start questioning yourself, become curious about your belief system. If you notice anywhere where you set a goal and you almost instantly go, kind of like, yeah, right. You know you have competing commitments going on. You know you have an underlying system that's not driving you and helping you get in the right direction. So you're going to want to start journaling and and aligning your belief system. If you have, if you notice that you think you have a lot of competing commitments, start really small with what you're wanting to desire. So we can uh, we can stretch ourselves about 10% before we get so far out of our comfort zone that we go, that's not even possible. So just start stretching it by 10% in your belief system go, okay, right now I'm making, uh, uh, let's say you're making 50 grand a year and you want to get to a hundred thousand, then go, okay, well, I'm going to stretch it to 55 and then I'm going to stretch it 10% and I'm going to keep moving up until that belief goes, oh no, I'm totally worth 10 million a year. If you say to yourself right now, I'm worth 10 million a year and you're instantly, your subconscious is like, yeah, right you're not gonna be able to achieve your goals because there's the, those beliefs are gonna be holding you back. So take small stretches in your belief system. Number three, vision. <laughs> you must have a vision. You need to start visualizing where you want to go and writing it down. So in your vision, you're writing down all the things you wanna create, and let's just start with 2020. All the things you wanna create in 2020. What do you want to, who do you wanna be? What are you going to do and who are you going to, how are you going to, how are you going to get there and have what you want to have? So the be, do, have model. First, think about who you're going to be. Have that identity shift. Feel what it feels like to be that person and start writing everything down. Have a document on your computer that you can continuously uh, add to and expand upon. What's the vision that you want to create in 2020 when you're looking back at the year, you're sitting on your couch and you're going, wow, look at all I accomplished in 2020. Write all that down. Number four, I want you to visualize it every single day every day of the year. If you spent five to 10 minutes every day of the year visualizing your goals coming true, visualizing the vision you're stepping into, visualizing the powerful, awesome, incredible person that you wanna become, your life will dramatically change, I promise you. It is one of the most powerful tools that most people overlook, the visualization piece. And number five, of course, you've got to take strategic action. You can't just sit on the couch and wish a whole bunch of amazing things will come your way. Sure, if you do what I said in steps one through four, things will start to shift, but you've got to take strategic action. You've got to go, okay, who do I need to be? And now what am I going to do to have all those things? So you're going to ask yourself every single morning, what are the top three to five highest priority action steps I'm committed to taking today to fulfill my vision. So these are all integrated. I'm going to recap real fast. Number one, desire. Number two, belief. Number three, vision. Number four, visualization. And number five, strategic action. And this will help you accomplish your goals in a totally new way where you get to be fulfilled on your teleological purpose, stepping into your zone of genius, act tapping into your genius juice and loving your life because you're looking at it from a more holistic perspective and you're becoming the person that you need to become to be the most empowered version of yourself so that you can create the life and business of your dreams. I love doing this work with people. I've got room for a couple more clients, so contact me. Let's work together. Leave a rating and a review if you're loving this podcast. I hope you're having an incredible day where you thrive and feel alive.